This is going to be your guide to Dynite Ore in the Pokemon Sword and Shield Crown Tundra expansion. So, I've been doing a lot of research, I've been putting in a lot of work to test the best way of getting Dynite Ore, and so far, my conclusion is that if someone says, just do endless Dynamax adventures, they're wrong. So this is going to be a pretty crazy video where we deep dive everything about Dynite Ore, which means if you want to help out other people, please share this video on social media, post it in every Pokemon group you are a part of, because we need to make sure that proper information is out there. And if you get helped in any way, don't forget to leave a like, because it also helps out the video, helps out the channel. So yeah, we need to start from the beginning. Let's talk about regular Dynamax adventures, because the Dynite Ore variance is super high. You can get as low as three. Like if you just go random NPCs, you make it to the legendary and you fail, you just get three Dynite Ore. If somehow your team is abysmal and your NPCs are trolling, you can get even less than that. But if you connect with other people, you can see the things. You investigate a den, that's gonna be one. You connect with others to play, that's going to be two. And then, you know, you can get up to five that way. Or with a perfect run, which means everything going right, you know, investigating a den, reaching the innermost area, catching the very special Pokemon at the end. So if you pass the legendary Pokemon, you don't get that bonus. You need to keep the Pokemon, which means no shiny hunting. Completing the adventure safely is also very difficult. That means losing no lives and then connecting with others to play. The perfect run is going to give you 13 Dynite Ore. Now, there's a lot of variance to this as well, because if you connect with other players, randoms, they can also troll and they can make your life difficult and it's going to take some time. Now, playing with other people is going to have its benefits and its drawbacks. The benefit is going to be more Dynite Ore and also just a generally higher skill level in the game. I'm not talking about randoms, like if you team up with your friends and you can play really quickly and really well, that's going to help out. There's also going to be communication time and also more move animation time. So that's going to slow you down quite a bit compared to the instant response of NPCs and just being able to kind of play the game a lot faster. But NPCs can be unreliable. So things get weird. Like I have gotten perfect runs with NPCs in less than 15 minutes, but if you're playing with good friends, it seems like the average is, you know, 12-ish, 15-ish minutes. So it seems like you can get four to five complete Dynamax adventures an hour if everything is going right. And also it seems like the average amount of Dynite you're going to get is around 10, because it also depends on if you've already caught the Legendary before or not, if you always get perfect runs, and if you even beat it. So there's even a chance that with a good coordinated team, the RNG is just against you, whether it's the opposing Pokemon, the moves that they use, just the difficulty of the Legendary at the end, or all kinds of other things that could go wrong. So you can get like 50 Dynite or an hour, maybe more if like everything is going right just through the regular adventures, but at some point you're also just going to run out of Legendary Pokemon and then you're not getting those bonuses and everything is going to be cut down permanently. So that's something else to keep in mind. Now let's talk about the calculation for Endless Dynamax Adventures. Endless Dynamax Adventures are going to give you one Dynite Ore per den explored and then 11 for clearing the floor. Now I've talked to people that have made it past floor three as far as fourth floor and it seems like it's always going to be 11. It's not like 11, then 15, then 17, or 20 or something. So if you just keep on running it down, you're going to end up with a solid amount. Now, maybe the information is going to come out like later on that if you make it super far, the rewards start getting really good, but that starts getting very inconsistent. My experience is that it took me 50 minutes with a group of random people to get 34 Dynite Ore because we failed at the third legendary Pokemon. Now I don't have a screenshot, but how the number broke down for me is that I got 22 from making it to the third floor, and then we have 4, 4, 3, so that gives us another 11, and then everyone quit but one person, so I only got one communication Dynite Ore bonus at the end, and that was 50 minutes for 34, which is less than if I just did Dynamax adventures with potentially NPCs. I could probably even fail one that time, so if we like extend it out to an hour, probably fail one with NPCs, clear four, and then end up with more Dynite Ore than the endless Dynamax Adventures, which are supposed to be the best method. So now that I've talked about how Dynite Ore works with Dynamax Adventures, let's talk about my method. Now, if anyone's seen my guide on how to get Armorite Ore, this is going to be the same thing with just a couple of tweaks because we are in the Crown Tundra. So what you want to do is you want to fly to the Crown, and then you want to head to this Max Raid Den in the path to the top. So you go over here, and this is going to be filled with Dragon Pokemon, but what it means is you bring Eternatus. So my Eternatus has a lagging tail. 
Seems strange, but it'll make sense. And then all you need, special attack nature, max special attack, level 100, hyper train it, and this Eternatus is going to be a boss. Then you just throw in a wishing piece, start up a max raid battle, and we're going to watch how crazy this gets. Purple Den, okay, this actually spices things up quite a bit, so this method has a little bit of a benefit outside of just Dynite Ore, because if I get a Pokemon like this, I can battle it and I can reap those rewards. So a multi-scale, almost competitive ready Dragonite is going to be pretty cool. And also we're going to be getting a lot of rewards from this as well. Just like a side note, if you run into something desirable, you can also take that and then get extra benefit on top of that. If you only care about Dynite Ore, then you can ignore this part, but I want to go for the multi-scale Dragonite, so BRB. Wow, that Dragonite was almost perfect. And it also has the multi-scale ability, so there's some pretty good benefits to this method right here. But if you're just caring about Dynite Ore, let's watch what happens when we just throw in a wishing piece, find a 3-star or a 4-star. So, as long as it's not a 4-star Dredagon, you're going to be able to beat it in one turn, or at least you're going to have a really good chance of being in one turn, if you do have a different Pokemon than what you want to do. Time skip ahead 1, check it again, doesn't really take too much time. Go through, boom, 4-star Dratini. I have beaten this Pokemon in one turn before, because this is why we have the lagging tail. This is why we're running the Eternatus. We're doing double damage on the Dynamax Cannon, because that counts as a Dynamax Pokemon. Super effective Dragon Hit with Stab on an incredibly powerful Legendary Pokemon. Really, it just comes down to our NBCs. On a 3-star, you're going to bring them down to Shields, and you're going to break through it. NBCs can struggle to get, you know, a 4-star Pokemon to the Shields, but if they do you can still find the KO with the Eternatus. So we're getting one turn Dynamax. So let's watch this happen. So boom, big Iron Tail right there. Quillfish with the Poison Jab. That has to be enough to put it into it. Boom, it's desperate. And now, wait for Dratini to use its move. Max Wormwind, fine, whatever. Do you, Dratini. And then we just overwhelm it with damage. It's gonna use its moves, that's fine. And Dynite Ore. So we can get a Dynite Ore that fast, and with a 3-star, it's quicker, it's even more reliable. Don't throw, or don't catch Pokemon because that takes up time. And there we go. Now, the biggest problem is that Dynite Ore only gives 1 per max raid battle, even on a 4-star. So when it came to Armorite Ore, you could actually get 2 from a 4-star, which made the rates way better. But with this, still a really quick way of getting Dynite. You also get some other goodies. I get three large experience candies. That's going to get some Pokemon, some pretty high levels, big nuggets, rare bones. There's going to be used in Cramomatic Crafting, uh, technically Grappa Berry if you need to do some EV training, and then you also get some other TRs which you might use, or you can also sell for money. So you're getting tons of other resources. Because the thing about Dynite Ore is that it's not like the perfect ultimate resource. Getting tons of Dynite Ore isn't really going to help you too much inside the game. It's just going to have one or two uses depending on what you're using it for. And that's where we can head back on over to show you guys what you use Dynite Ore for. So, go back into the Dynamax Adventure Place. This girl is the Dynite Ore shop. You've probably talked to her out of curiosity to see what you can get out of it. And I mean, if you're going to exchange Dynite Ore for candies, well, that's already a waste, because you can get Dynite Ore and Candies just from doing regular raids. Same for Dynamax Candy, pretty much like all of this is a waste. There's no point of buying Protein or Iron. If you go to the Isle of Armor, you can get it half off through the vending machine. Premier Ball, why would I do that? Beast Balls are 150! Bottle Caps, way too expensive. Ability Capsules, way too expensive. So, really, the only thing you're going to be spending Dyn Dynite Ore on are Ability Patches. And that's mostly just going to be for the legendary Pokemon you find inside of the Dynamax Adventures. So if you're just running endless Dynamax Adventures for ability patches, well, you're not really going to have too many things to use it on. Now, there are some other exceptions, like if you don't want to do the purple raid dens to get the hidden ability fossil Pokemon, then you can get a fo an ability patch on that, so you have like hidden ability Dracovish or Dracozolt. But it's actually faster to do the raids to get the hidden ability that way. Or it's also faster to just get the hidden ability Pokemon in the first place, unless it's a legendary, but some legendaries have had like events or Dream Radar, so we can get the hidden ability that way. Um, U2, Generation 1, also Generation 2, Lugia and Ho-Oh, if you transfer those from the virtual console, you can just uh, give them the battle stamp and then they'll have it, but not everyone has access to that. Just kind of shows like getting 200 Dynite Ore is going to take hours. And then if you really want Beast Ball, yeah, that's also stupid expensive. 
So, this shop is broken, and not good broken, it's just fundamentally broken. Like, if we compare this over to the Cramomatic, Cramomatic, that's gonna be three rare candies for an ability capsule. Wait, how many did they want again? 50 Dynite Ore for an ability capsule? Also, bottle caps, you can craft bottle caps by just having expensive enough items, such as rare candies, or also you can do some, like, uh, cheeky things depending on the items that you have. So you just saw that we got a big nugget from one of those raids. Well, if you put in a big nugget, like two big nuggets plus two comet shards, that's going to give you a bottle cap. You can also get bottle caps from the digging duo. So you're just better off putting your resources and time elsewhere than getting dynite ore and then spending it on things. Also, three dynite ore for armorite ore. This is a complete waste as well because, as I talked about, four-star raids give two armorite ore. So if you do the same method, you're getting more armorite ore than dynite to armorite ore equivalent. Also, if we go back to the Cramatic, they've updated the recipe slightly. That putting in dynite ore with this recipe will also give you PP up. So three dynite ore is worth of PP up, even though, like I said, it's faster to get armorite ore. It's, uh... It's weird, so really it just comes down to ability patch, and it's so expensive it should only be used as a last resort to get a hidden ability on a Pokemon. So my closing statement is Dynite Ore is something that you shouldn't actively try to farm. That you should just engage with the gameplay mechanics naturally, and then you're going to accumulate a ton of Dynite Ore. Because the first thing you need to do is catch all the legendary Pokemon, catch all the Ultra Beasts, do the regular Dynamax adventures before you even think about doing endless Dynamax adventures to get your Dynite Ore, but also Dynamax adventures have the added benefit of increased shiny odds. So you're better off just shiny hunting Dynamax adventures, turning around and going, wow, I have a lot of Dynite Ore. So make sure you complete all of that. And then with the endless Dynamax adventures, if you're not completing the second or third floor legendary every time, you were just better off doing regular Dynamax adventures, maybe even after you've already caught the legendary Pokemon as well. So to get the most out of endless Dynamax adventures, you have to have pretty much just beaten everything, not care about getting shiny Pokemon, and then you need a group of three friends that are going to be super committed to playing very fast and very efficiently, and even then RNG can still throw you off. Now with the method I showed, you can get about 50 Dynite Ore an hour just grinding 3 and 4 star quick one shot raids. So unless you find a reliable way of getting more Dynite Ore that way, you're just better off playing the game naturally and then hoping that it eventually adds up to enough ability patches to where you get the Pokemon that you want. Fortunately for beating the story, you get like a Beast Ball and a bonus ability patch, so that gives you like a little bit of a head start and then it just kind of gets weirder from there. Now I also want to talk about the rare Delibird max raid battles that I did a video on earlier today, because the rewards from the Delibird raids are pretty insane. In three, four, or five star rare Delibird raids, you get two Dynite Ore as a reward. Now you're not going to be able to find one of those every minute, but if you're joining someone else's Delibird raid, you get to keep those rewards. So you get an insane amount of Dynite in a short amount of time, and the five-star Delibird raid has a 3% chance at rewarding a Dream Ball. So it's like if you just only care about the rare balls, like if you value a Beast Ball and a Dream Ball equally, you're better off with the 3% chance to get the Dream Ball than to waste 150 Dynite Ore to get a Beast Ball. Also, the Delibird raids are giving you Dynite Ore, as well as a lot of other really good rewards and candies. So it's a very complicated thing, and I've been talking to people that have been like farming 5-star Delibird raids, because the host, they're going until they get a Dream Ball, so if you keep on joining, you just get to farm that for Dynite Ore, and if you have, like, if you all have Terrakion, and you're all just like one-shotting this thing and beating and taking it down two turns, which is a possibility, you can complete the Delibird raid in about two minutes, which means you're looking at around one Dynite Ore per minute. So this is like the theoretical best. It does take a lot of setup. It isn't like just something you can do as a single player, just run out there and do, but it just kind of shows like, yeah, there's just better ways of getting gameplay augmentation. Because like the reason why you're getting Dynite Ore for the ability patch is because you plan on getting a competitive Pokemon or a legendary Pokemon that has a hidden ability. Well, you now have to worry about leveling it up, using bottle caps, EV training it. You need to get those other resources and by engaging with the dens or other forms of gameplay, you're going to be getting those resources as well as the Dynite Ore for the ability patch, so it does balance out, unless you were just having like the perfect gameplay inside Dynamax Adventures, which through my experience and through talking with other people is pretty difficult to do. So 
Hope you guys enjoyed this deep dive on Dynite Ore. Like, Dynamax Adventures are great, Dynite Ore not so much, but the ability patch is a pretty necessary item. So, like I said, just enjoy your Dynamax Adventures, enjoy getting shiny Pokemon and catching all the legendaries, and then worry about all that other stuff later. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.